picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Well, hello and welcome back. I I feel a bit remiss and guilty about not having a full modeling video for last, last week. It's Saturday morning now. So to make up for that in no small measure, I'm going to do a weekend project, probably a day project, um, to... Uh, because I've been blessed with, and not just me, everybody around has been blessed with a beautiful day. It's going to be in the 80s today, and it's February, the end of February, and it's 80. So, uh, got to take advantage of that. And I'm going to do a project that's kind of connected to the uh, um, the room, the house edition. It was something I was pondering along the same lines. So, uh, let me tell you what it is. Okay, when I was doing the closet, designing the closet doors for the edition, um, I had thought that maybe I would want to do one as a turbo lift door and maybe do the other as a TARDIS door. And uh, the more I got into it, the more I liked this. I liked the idea of both of them being bridge door or uh, turbo lift doors. Although on this one, I am still going to put the Mirror Universe logo. Um, so that left me that this closet right here with no door on it. So I've decided to make that my TARDIS door. So that's what we're going to be making today. Those of you unfamiliar, the six of you on left on the planet that are unfamiliar with what a TARDIS, with what a TARDIS looks like, that's what a TARDIS looks like. Uh, I have a preference to go with the old style or older style uh, Eccleston Tenant version, which is less of a cartoon blue and doesn't have the St. John's Ambulance sticker there. Um, many, many years ago, uh, continue with walk with me here. Many, many years ago, I got this plate from the RPF. Uh, which is a uh, one to one scale plate of the TARDIS door in the future, knowing that in the future I would be wanting to put that on a mock up. So that's where we uh, have got this material. And uh, let me show you the wood. And as I said, it's an absolutely gorgeous day out today. So uh, here are the materials that I have purchased, not the grass seed, that's for something else. Uh, but uh, there's the, the bifold door and some scrap wood. Or scrap uh, lumber to go on it and uh, I've got maybe a hundred bucks 125 in materials the, Of course the most expensive thing was the bifold door. So uh, We're gonna get this built and probably painted today. I don't know if we'll get it hung, but we're gonna get it uh, Along along the way. It's not that tough to do so uh, I'm gonna get the, the big tools of uh, mass destruction out and start chopping some wood Okay, it's looking pretty good. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some blue paint and a beer. Beer first, then the blue paint. But uh, yeah, I got all the the, the uh, trim put on here. And the nice thing about this particular version of the TARDIS is that the more grainy and obvious your wood is, the better off your final result's going to be. Because at least the Tenant Eccleston TARDIS had a very noticeable grain texture to it. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make, run some sandpaper over this a little bit and uh, let the glue dry. You can see where I've got some glue bombs to clean up. And uh, then throw some blue paint at it. And I'll let you know right now that you need to unbunch your panties and get them out of a wad because no, I am not doing this to the exact dimensions of the actual prop. I am doing this to fit a 36 inch wide bifold closet door so yeah I'm I'm playing around with dimensions of things the most important thing for me was that the phone box fit inside that frame and then everything else is gravy the um, the dimensions of the windows are going to be off the uh, everything it's just going to be blue and an indication of a TARDIS it's not an actual prop there's a door half and half Time to stop and have another beer. As you can guess, this is very thirsty work. Putting all this blue on here, and then I gotta stand it up and pa paint all the edges. And then one coat on the inside, I think, and uh, a second coat on the outside. But uh, it's coming along. I think I'm gonna get the, the uh, door painted today. Probably not gonna get it hung today, only because I spread this out over the weekend. No sense killing myself today. Well, it's a little after three and the uh, door's been painted. I'm going to let that dry now. As I recall, the prop, the inside of the door is white. So uh, I won't have to worry about painting any of that blue, but I've got the uh, 
the blue in and around everything and I'm gonna let this dry oh for a few hours I don't know if I'll paint the inside white today or not I have to, means I have to get a whole roller and all that kind of stuff so I'm thinking I'll leave this naked for the time being while I ponder the best way of putting in the windows but now I think I'll sit and enjoy watching the birds feed lovely 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 nature at its finest now before I collapse into a heap this afternoon I thought I would place this in its resting place so that you can see now obviously I've got to trim it down on both sides and hang the the hanging hardware but uh, that's where it's gonna live I think it fits in just nice well welcome back it's day two of the TARDIS door project and today I'm going to concentrate on making the little window frames for the top and I want to get the door hung today. Um, we're going to be working mostly indoors because it's about 20-25 degrees colder today than it was this time yesterday. If it warms up, we'll go back outside, but everything I'm doing here today I can probably do indoors. What I've got here is some project wood that's about a half inch square, yeah half inch by 36 inches. Now I could probably have saved a little bit of money by buying longer lengths of this but uh, I got a small car and it's easier to get this stuff home this way and like I said I'm going to be probably working mostly on this tabletop I'm going to throw some cardboard down to protect it and uh, uh, get the chopping tools out and uh, I'll probably set those up on the back porch and just run outside and make my cuts and then bring it back in here to glue it up well, radio, these are going along very quickly, very nicely, I'm very happy with these. Uh, I've got the frame with the inner mullion frame already done. What I'm going to do now, now is to uh, space out the, the inner uh, window mullions, I guess it would be the correct term. And they need to go something like this and this. I need to divide this distance in thirds. And, um, and then I'll only have to cut little spacers to go between this to give you the illusion of the, uh, the horizontal mullion. So let me get those ones cut. You can see the other frame over there is nicely waiting its turn. Okay, no matter how careful you measure, things will be bent or warped. So these are all custom measured to fit. And uh, I'm just going to glue those in. I'm not going to try to staple them because the stapling has been a hit or miss. And luck fortunately more hits than misses. But... I've had to pull out a few errant staples. And there we have one finished and ready to be painted frame. And then I'm going to cut a piece of white plexi to go back in behind the windows. But I'm going to let this sit for a while, let the glue dry. Uh, I get impatient because I'm used to working with CAs. And when you're working with wood glue, you've got to let things dry. So uh, dry it will, and then I'll work on the other. Here's the window in window frame in place. Uh, now in the Eccleston Tenant Doctor era, that frame is blue like the rest of the uh, doorway. So uh, after I have let this dry and then uh, beat it into submission, I have to uh, chisel out some of the opening that wasn't quite square and all that. Once I get all that done, then it gets a uh, coat of blue just like everything else. Actually, what I think I'm going to do is... Uh, Wait for it to dry, then prime it with a spray paint so that I don't have to do so much covering with the blue paint. I uh, won't have to worry about it soaking into the wood. So I'll sand it up and give it a primer coat, probably black. Okay, well, it's Sunday night, and this is as far as I got. I got to tell you, I rehung that door twice, maybe three times before I got it to where I liked it. Now, since I added the... Uh, uh, the one by threes here, I had to jimmy this joint here because the added uh, the added thickness of the door wouldn't allow it to open as tight as it was designed for. So, uh, so uh, I had to allow an extra bit of gap right in there for the door to open. I'll dress that up or paint something behind that to kind of hide it, but it was never going to be perfect. It's not. How the design how the door was designed the door was designed to push in on that one so uh 
this is what they call an ad adaptation ladies and gentlemen and I've got white plastic to go behind that's this is just primer this is some of that blue paint I had left over from the chairs and I'm priming them with that because I've got very little of the uh, specially mixed blue paint left that I don't want to mix up another quart have them mix up another quart for it so uh, that's where she's going to sit for the rest of the evening I've got to get some more trim wood for this side and um, then it will truly be done well good morning it's Monday uh, still working on the TARDIS doors for the closet and I swear to you if I hadn't turned my back into a uh, wet moldy noodle uh, over the weekend, I would have been done with this, but I overexerted myself and threw the lower part of my back out, which is neither here nor there, but it did stop me from working as quickly as I like to work. So, today we finish these doors, we take care of some yard work, and then we are back to actual modeling. I've got the uh, window frames, I've got the window frames uh, painted, I don't have them installed yet, so what I need to do is finish the trim around this bit here and then install the windows and do some final touches and touch up paint and it's done so it won't take long but I do have to run out to uh, the local big box store and uh, get some more wood and another quart of paint well hello it's Tuesday a little afternoon and uh, huzzahs on handsprings I am almost done with the TARDIS doors uh, last steps to do was putting this white plexiglass in the windows and I've got to put the door handle on and then I'll be done and free to go on to other projects hooray well that was a a, uh, a project that took maybe a day longer than it should have taken because of me tweaking out my back which slows me down like you wouldn't believe um, but it also because I believe the, the way the world works it also gave time for a present to arrive in the mail and anybody who knows me knows I was that kid who was always sending away for things as a child how many box tops or however many what whatever's and so for me to get things in the mail was always a big thrill now to get things in the mail that I don't even know are coming that's better than Christmas and as you know Elliot Brown friend of the show uh, has from time to time blessed me with some rather unique gifts and this time I gotta say Elliot I got a bone to pick with you I got a bone to pick with you no uh, what Elliot sent me was this uh, if many you'll recognize is a, a resin kit of the satellite of love from mystery science theater one of my favorites one of my favorite shows as you noticed the crow in my uh, studio or in, or in the room but what Elliot has sent me the devious devil that he is is a bare bones this is what I call a bare bones kit because you'll notice it has none of the surface detail that is strewn about the actual satellite of love prop and why you ask why would you send such a smooth thing well a it's easier to cast this way I'll guarantee you and B he sent me a whole sheet a sheet load a whole sheet load of uh, photo etched greeblies to go on it um, a fret as you as you might call this a fret and I am fretting having having to put all this on here but actually this couldn't have come at a better time because um, after doing the Proteus and after working on big stuff I really wanted to work on something small and uh, not light it and something that I could you know everything is contained to this desktop working on the TARDIS door, working on the chairs. Those are big projects, and you don't even know what's going on outside. Uh, getting into the whole, you know, landscaping around the house and putting down mulch and, and doing all that kind of big strenuous work. So at the end of a long day of that, I like to sit down and work small, work tiny, work intense. On one, Everything I need is on one tabletop. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So... Today I'm going to start by cleaning up the bone, washing it real good, and if you ever really want to get practice at laying down photo etch, this is going to be the kit for it because a lot of it is simply laying it flat on the different facets of the ball. If I hold, if I hold it like this, it looks obscene, but uh, if you look like this, then you know it's a satellite of love. But um, uh, a lot of it's just going to be laying flat, etched down on flat surfaces, which is good 
good practice on how to handle etch. So thank you again, Elliot. This is the this will be the next kit on the table and uh, a subject of at least a couple of weeks worth of videos. Uh, I doubt I'm going to get too much done on it because it's 80 degrees outside and I got to get some grass seed down. So uh, I'll be doing this in the evenings. Thanks again, Elliot, and uh, stay tuned, friends and neighbors. Good morning or good afternoon. It's Friday and I'm finally getting around to doing some detailing on the Satellite of Love. Uh, that's only mostly because the weather outside has finally taken a turn back towards the uh, more normal for this time of year, which means it's uh, windy and cold outside, or at least colder than it has been. So uh, I have done all of the yard work that I can do and all that I really want to do in given the certain circumstances. So let's get back to working on satellite love. I have cleaned up the seam uh, around the edge and filled a couple of uh, pock holes. Uh, these I found these uh, these shapes to be a little soft so I just went to a, a little circular sander and um, just touched them up against to kind of you know sharpen up some of these edges and what I'm going to do since this is really such a hodgepodge of uh, or a Joel Hodgton podge a hodgepodge of uh, detailing that there are certain things that I uh, I know where they go thanks to these wonderful references that Elliot set with him sent with the kit and I know the parts that uh, correspond to some detail so what I'm going to do is lay in the detail that I can see that I know and then kind of fill in the rest with what's left over uh, not very scientific but that's the best I got and you can see I'm starting to put the uh, photo etch on it's it's slow work but at least it's tedious um, so now I'm going to cut up and I've been going over uh, the different uh, reference pictures to see specifically these things to see which which uh, faces of the uh, ball have uh, one or both or two or neither uh, so I've been trying to uh, like match them up picture for picture so uh, we'll just continue with this and that ladies and gentlemen is where we're going to finish it for this week uh, work continues on the satellite of love uh, a lot of, at this point it's uh, randomly putting on the bits of photo etch um, trying to make it look not too good and not too uniform is the thing because the the actual model itself was looks like it was put together to, to appear kind of haphazard so uh, I'm trying not to do too uh, symmetrical or measured a job on this but uh, we'll continue this next week and uh, probably finish it up easily enough <coughs> excuse me Ooh, a little bit of dinner went down the wrong way but uh, <coughs> excuse me um, but uh, that's going to finish us up. I hope you enjoyed the uh, little bit out of the box, out of the blue box, out of the box uh, build this week. And uh, the satellite, and we will get back on that next week. So until then, be good, be good to each other, and uh, have fun out there. See you next time.